our last video, we saw how to initialize the control. And right now you can see that our project is running on localhost 8181. We have not added any code to implement our control. So the next step would be to now add the TypeScript code that is going to implement the control that will be consumed in the Power Platform. Since I already have the code existing, I'm going to quickly copy it into our file and have a quick walkthrough on what that code does. Alright, so we have our code in and you can see since I'm running npm start watch, every change that we make on our code will be automatically reflected on our component on the left. So I'm going to expand our VS code. So now let's have a quick walkthrough of the code that we have on our file. We started by declaring and initializing some private variables that are going to be used throughout the project. We didn't need to add any code into our constructor. So the first method that we address is the init method. So we're simply going to add the initialization code for our control. So now the next thing is to initialize our earlier declared uh, our variables. We set the edit mode to false. So that means that when we load our control, you will see that automatically we are not in edit mode. So by default, we set this to false. Then we go ahead and create a message container, a container of type span, which holds the message that is actually greeting the user. So true to that, I'll just uh, ins inspect this control and you'll, you'll realize that once I highlight this message, you'll see that it did. This is an element of type span. So that is what this line uh, of code does. Then we see that we have some conditional branching being implemented here. And this simply just sets the message that will be displayed here to hello. And then it's going to pick in the name that is on the context variable. So if I go ahead and edit the name, so I'll say hi Joe, save you'll realize that it's going to update the name. So this Joe is actually being stored in the context variable. And this conditional branching simply says that if this dot edit mode evaluates to true, so that means if we are in edit mode, then pass in an empty string. And you'll realize that if we switch to edit mode, we don't have anything being displayed here. It's an empty string. But the moment we are not in edit mode, so the moment this evaluates to false, then pass in the value that we have in the context uh, variable. So that's what we're doing here. The next thing is that we need to create this text box, the text box that is going to hold in the variable. And if we inspect this, we'll realize that it's also a text box of type input, just as we've just declared here. So the type is input, text box input. And then we can see an implementation of conditional branching again, where we're simply setting the display style. And we're saying that if this dot edit mode evaluates to true, that means if we are in edit mode, then the display type should be block. But if we are not in edit mode, the display type should be none. So see, this code is responsible for displaying this text box whenever we're on edit mode and then making it disappear when we are on read mode. All right, so here we have, uh, we've implemented an if logic and we're saying that if we have a value in our context variable, then create a new element of type div and pass in the message in the text box that we created earlier as children in this container. So let's quickly inspect and see if that is the case. And you'll realize that we have a custom control of type div. So that is what we are implementing by using this piece of code. The other thing we need to do is that we need to flip uh, the message on the button. So if we are in read mode, the button should read edit. But if we switch to edit mode, the button should read save. And so this piece of code is responsible for doing that. Again, the conditional branching here. So we also added in a new method, a button click method, because we need to pass in instructions that will be executed once we hit our button. Here we can see the use and the implementation of the nullish coalescing operator. Now what is happening here is that if we are not in edit mode, 
and if we have a value defined in the name property so if this value defined then pass that value into the text box dot value property now if this is not defined then pass in an empty string otherwise if we are in edit mode and the value that is in the text box value so the value that is in here is not the same as the value that is passed in the name property then we need to swap that means someone has changed so that means we've changed from joe to joy so you need to update whatever i have in my text box and save it into the name property so that is exactly what this piece of code is doing and then we'll need to flip back into the read mode so once we do that uh, we have our other method that is responsible for making an update on this control anytime we have a change in our name property so, so every time i change the name in the name property it's going to match it to what we have in our context variable and display it into the visual so you'll see if i change hello um hello user welcome power yes it's going to update that on our control so the other method is a get outputs method which saves that the output of the control before we pass in the new data and we can see an implementation of the nullish coalescing operator so if our name is defined that is going to be stored and passed into the name property finally the destroy method basically cleans up our control if necessary so in case we have any pending processes when we no longer use up the control then this piece of code is responsible for clearing that up. So think of it as your cleanup code. So this next short video will simply cover how you can deploy this control into the Dataverse and have it accessible in the Power Platform by these citizen developers. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.